Hey, what's up? This is the show where I usually review my whole Steam library one random game at a time, but not today. As some of you might know, I've gotten a new job at the start of this year, which has taken some time away from this endeavor. But on the bright side, it also supplies me with a good amount of shekels, which allowed me to finally upgrade my office space. What I mean by that is that I could release my decade old PC from its slavery. Now I upgraded my setup, which I will surely treat better. So yeah, this is my review of how it was to build a PC from scratch for someone who hasn't really done it themselves before. If you're just curious about the before and after, I'll save you some time. This is my setup from before. The highlights of this are the 1060, which came out in like 2016, and the i7 7700, plus the tiny CPU cooler. I'm not quite sure what kind of cooler that is, looks like a normal Intel cooler maybe, plus a lot of top tier cabling as you can see. The new setup's focal point are the 4080 Super, the 7800X3D CPU and the boatload of shiny RAM. I'll go more into detail on how I chose everything and at the end there's a small assembly part. Without further ado, let's start with the research process. How did I decide on what to build I hear you ask? I had to do a lot of looking stuff up and watching videos since I didn't have any idea on the current hardware landscape. Before that, you should know what your goals are though. I set myself a budget for around 2.5k for everything. I knew that I wanted to play current games without a problem and upgrade from 1080p to 1440p, possibly even 4k. I heard a lot of good things from people going to 1440p after playing on 1080p for years, so I imagined the jump from 1080p to 4k would be even crazier. Kinda like going from riding the bus every day to having a race car. Small side note, I also got a cool standing desk recently, but yeah that one's probably not the interesting one here, I just wanted to mention it uh, for completeness sake for the uh, office upgrade. As I said, I had no idea what to get, so I just fired up PC Part Picker and started throwing random highly rated shit together. This gave me a baseline, which I could post online and improve upon. There's subreddits like r slash build a PC, r slash PC master race, r slash PC build, and I'm sure you could find more that will also give you feedback on your build. The r slash build a PC subreddit also has a discord you can join which uh, you'll probably get quicker help or more specific help if you ask your question there. So now let's go into each component separately. In the end I chose the case based on how cool it looks, but I didn't start there. Initially I thought I would just go for a boring black exterior, optimized for airflow like the Lian Li Lang Cool or the Corsair Airflow model and be done with it. It would just be there to hold these expensive ass parts anyways. But then I thought, if I spend this huge amount of money, why not just make it look cool too and display it on the nice new desk that I got, instead of just under it where no one will ever see it. A fish tank case would look really cool, so I started informing myself about the different types and found the Flow H6 model. I watched a couple videos on it and it looked pretty cool. It has a two chamber layout which lets you just cram all the cable shit in one chamber and the pretty stuff is on display in the other chamber. This model in particular is cool because it has an unusual shape as well as integrated case fans. I still had to get other case fans and read up on how to even install them and what they do exactly, but more on that later. This one has case fans already there, which was a plus for me. So if you go from boring case to interesting fish tank case, then we might as well go from boring normal parts to RGB giga glowing parts. I like these ambient room lights with wavy pattern anyways, so why not go all the way. The H6 Flow also comes with an RGB version. I paid 120 bucks and 83 cents for this case. Okay, so if we revisit the goals now, we can add, it has to look cool to it as well. I knew the current generation was the 40 series, but I also heard that soon the 50 series would release. I wasn't sure if it would be worth it to wait for the new cars, and also Black Friday is coming up sometime anyways, but in the end I decided to just buy it now. There will always be the next thing on the horizon, so why not just wait for the next next generation of stuff? You can infinitely play this game, so you could say that if you're on a system that's a couple years old and still capable today, then you could just wait. But if you're running on an ancient system like the one I had, you should just pull the trigger. It'll probably still be worth it. Worst case, you sell your card for around the same and just upgrade to new gen. With this out of the way, I was looking at the 4090 and the 4080S. 
I would have liked the 4090 since I possibly wanted to build a system that would be 4K capable, but spending basically my whole budget on the GPU wasn't an option, and I didn't really want to increase my budget either. This pretty much just left the 4080, I'm still gonna try playing on 4K with it, but I heard mixed opinions on this. So far, having used the system for a couple weeks now, I'm very happy with it. It runs Silent Hill on around 60 FPS with high settings. What I didn't realize at the time is that there's a million different manufacturers. They all produce the same card in slightly different versions. Gainward, MSI, Zotan, PNY, and however else they're all called. I spent a whole afternoon or two to check their differences and compare and blah blah blah, but the impression I got is that you should just go for the one that you think looks the coolest or is the cheapest, since the differences between them are pretty marginal. Correct me if you think otherwise, I saw some people swearing by this brand or cursing this other brand because of their loud card or some other problem they had. I went with the PNI GeForce RTX 4080 Super 16GB XLR8 Gaming Virto Epic XRGB, uh, which cost me a pretty 1066 euro and 72 cents. Of course I knew nothing about CPUs as well, but the overwhelming consensus that I could see was that the 7800X3D was the best CPU for gaming on the market at the time. Or at least the, the best bang for your buck. As I said, I want a big gaming CPU, but I also like to do the occasional editing and productivity work. I know the X3D is not the best choice for those things, but my thinking was that surely it still blows what I had before out of the water, so who cares if another Intel chip or whatever else has better multitasking. This will still be a huge upgrade, so I just went with this. The AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D cost me 329 bucks and 8 cents for it. Update from the future, I got pretty lucky with that price I think, because I saw the prices for that chip uh, went pretty high recently. Plus, bonus value, I got two games with the CPU, which was a pleasant surprise. I got the uh, Warhammer game that recently came out and Unknown Awakening. I know nothing about this game, but uh, it's free, so. Back when I got my previous PC, I don't think all-in-one coolers were a thing yet. At least I had never heard of them, so I didn't really know anything about them when I started my research. They do look pretty cool, which was an important goal as we previously discussed, but it's also true that I would just like to set the cooling up once and never deal with it again. I heard the pumps can cause problems a couple years down the line, there might be leakage, and that the maintenance is just higher in general. For that reason, I didn't really want to mess with any kind of water cooling. I just went with a good old CPU fan. At first I thought it would be a Noctua NHD15, but I found out there's comparable coolers for a fraction of the price. Final selection was between the Peerless Assassin and the Phantom Spirit cooler. Also, since the CPU doesn't get that hot in the first place, I thought this would be fine. Also, it has RGB. I went with the Thermalright Phantom Spirit ARGB version for $49.99. In recent years I had the occasional problems with having too little RAM in my system, as my friends that wanted to play Rust with me can confirm, so I wanted to go big on this one. I saw many people recommending going for 32 gigs of RAM, and that this uh, should be fine for most people, but since I also plan on doing some video stuff, and since I like having a gajillion tabs open, I went with 64 gigabytes. And the RGB looks pretty cool. I got the Corsair Vengeance RGB 64 gigabyte version for 191.66. I got no clue about motherboards, I still don't, I just took the cheapest one that fit all the other components. As long as it has a couple M2 slots for the SSD, I'm happy. I couldn't really tell you what advantages a way more expensive motherboard brings with it, instead of just getting the cheapest one. I know there's integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but that's about it. If you know more about this, please do enlighten me in the comments. I ended up going with the MSI B650 for 164 and 58 cents. As for the storage, I bought a 2TB M.2 SSD a couple months or a year ago, so I went with another one for a total of 4TB. Got the Western Digital M.2 for 123 bucks and 76 cents. A guy on a PC building subreddit recommended this one, it has enough wattage and a 12 pin thing for the GPU, so yeah, I just went with this one. It's the MSI Mag 
850 watts for 109 bucks and 43 cents. As I said earlier, case fans were pretty arcane to me. There's different configurations, opinions and schools of thought. I just watched a video on my case specifically and went by style to figure out my configuration. As for style, this video here by PC Centric was pretty helpful. I wanted to make my PC kind of look like that. He recommends buying two bottom 140mm fans in RGB and that's what I did. I didn't get any additional fans for the back or top as another video testing the exact case says it doesn't really make a difference for temperatures. Of course you could say but more spinny RGB fans means more cool which I guess you have a point but you know what else they are? Very expensive. I bought the 140mm fans with an RGB controller thing and that was it. Looking for screen sucks. You have to read up on resolutions, panel types, color depth, and so on and so on. Looking at a screen review is like reading a physics thesis. I couldn't really make much sense of it, but reading user reviews and watching videos helped on that front. I knew I wanted a 4K monitor with preferably at least 144Hz. That's what I filtered for on PC Part Picker, and then I went from there. I landed on the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, which cost another juicy 668 bucks and 10 cents. After all this, I had to wait for the parts to arrive to initiate the final stage of this quest. Apart from the fact that the postman left my 2000 something dollar setup standing around in the corridor where anyone else could have also just yoinked it, getting the packages was pretty nice. I felt like a kid on Christmas building my tree of computer nerd stuff. Please enjoy this video of me trying to unbox the case while I explain why the assembly footage is pretty lacking. I did the classic rookie mistake of filming many of these videos in vertical for some reason. Also, I originally planned to just film the whole process, but filming and building at the same time was kind of a pain in the ass, so there might be some skipping and bad angles here and there. Special thanks to my girlfriend for operating the camera sometimes, and my brother for visiting and helping as well. So we started getting the case out and examining the fans and all the cables and stuff like that which the dual chamber setup kind of helped with that because everything is on one side and in front everything is uh, clear. So we got the 140 millimeter case fans and started installing those, but we weren't quite sure how to connect all the RGB cabling and stuff like that yet, which we'll get to later. After that, we continued with the motherboard. Of course, I armed myself with knowledge, knowledge and watched a how to build a PC video before. They recommend getting out the motherboard on a blanket or a surface and then installing what you can before you mount it to the case. That's exactly what we did. We inserted the first M.2 SSD under the heatsink and then we went for installing the CPU, which I had never done before at that point. I imagine it to be more spectacular or more difficult, but you just drop it in the designated area, put down the metal thing and then you, you use the lever to clamp it shut. After that we started installing the stands for the CPU fan, which there's a couple different types so you have to watch out if you have a, an AMD chip you have to use a certain kind of stand and if you have an Intel chip there's a different kind of stand. Yeah, but it'll probably tell you in the manual anyways. So we, we took some time to figure out the correct ones <laughs> and uh, then we installed them. Please pay some special attention to this expert application of uh, thermal paste. Very nice. After that we took this chungus of a heatsink and uh, yeah, don't forget to pull off the sticker. You should be good for mounting the heatsink. After that I had to attach the fans, but we ran into the problem of the RAM being too high kind of so the fan on the right side it would block the the ram stick and the cool rgb that i paid extra for so instead of mounting the fan on the right i decided to mount it on the left instead and turn it around like i had to double check to make sure the air was going the correct way but this way i get to see the the ram and it's doing okay um cooling Oh yeah, here to attach the fans you have this small metal spring or whatever and you just pull that over the heatsink and it holds your fan in place. 
as far as I heard, it's suboptimal, but it still, should still be okay. This video in particular um, helped me with this. He mentioned that you can do that. After that, we started connecting the case fans, the 140 mil, to the motherboard, checking for the RGB spots, like uh, where you slot that in, the cables. And after that, we open up the RAM, inserted the RAM in the motherboard. It's pretty straightforward. You just open the little latch thing and you push it in and then it clicks into place. Cool. So yeah, after that, we took the motherboard, inserted it into the case and screwed it tight. So what's still missing here is the PSU connections to everything. The like connecting the fan, connecting the power button and so on, connecting the RGB stuff and the graphics card. Now, let me tell you, this graphics card was huge. Also, inserting this thing was the most stressful part of this whole process because <laughs> I never inserted the GPU before, so I didn't even really know where it goes exactly and which of these back panels I have to remove first. And I was struggling with this one, okay? Um, also, I was scared to press too hard on stuff and to break something because sometimes I tried like pushing in a thing and the motherboard started bending. So I thought like, yo, maybe I should take it easy a little bit. Yeah, so I was getting sweaty at that time. So this thing was pretty heavy and the angle in which I tried to put it in was not very smart. I should probably lay the case on its side instead of holding it there like a dummy. Um, at the beginning also, I took off the wrong back panel thing. So it was a, an adventure, but eventually we got it in. All right. Also this GPU holder thing, it kind of messed, like I couldn't install it correctly because as you can see here, I had to use this RGB connector at that spot because it was the only one left that I could reach. So then I couldn't attach the GPU holder fully. I only have it screwed in on the top. So the bottom is just kind of dangling there. But I thought if I rest the GPU on that thing, it doesn't really matter if the bottom is like fully connected. So I don't know. I thought about getting like a, an additional GPU support kind of, but yeah, I haven't done that yet. And so far it's still holding. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I should probably still get it just in case. So now it was time for the first boot. Everything worked, everything lighted up how it's supposed to. So that was a really nice thing. So at this time, my old computer was still running normally. I just, I kept it as is. So that still had the M2 SSD in there. So I still needed to transfer that SSD to the new system. What I didn't realize though at the time is that the second M.2 slot is directly under this huge graphics card that I just struggled to install correctly. So I wasn't very happy about that. But um, the second time of taking everything out and installing the GPU again was way easier than the first time. So yeah, that was it pretty much. What is my conclusion? Building a PC can be a little bit scary sometimes because you don't want to break stuff or you don't really know what to buy exactly or where to put stuff. But with the help of nice internet people giving you guidance, I think you can manage. It's not that difficult. It's kind of like playing with Legos. So was it worth it to spend all that time researching and messing with this stuff? For me, I'd say yes. If I bought a comparable PC, it would have been at least a couple hundred bucks more expensive. Plus these systems are not configured exactly like you want them. Plus plus it's just cool to be able to say that you built it yourself. If you enjoyed watching me struggle with technology, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I sometimes post videos playing and talking about games. Good luck.